I'm Yuri. I'm Jacob. We're going for a drive. Mazda RX-8. GT without launch control. Let's do a rolling launch. This one's a little older. Nine thousand. All right, that's good. Horsepower and torque. Two hundred and thirty-two horsepower, one hundred and fifty-nine pound-feet of torque from a one-point-three-liter rotary engine. So then why are we reviewing an old Mazda? Why wouldn't we? Mazda Canada actually has a heritage fleet, so we're taking advantage of it. This is so much fun. Going all the way to 9,000 is cool. It's pretty quick, but it's not like fast, fast. So this was made from 2002 to 2012, and this is the 2011 version, so pretty much near the end of its cycle. And it does have a little bit of a refresh from when it first came out in 2002. Yeah, and in this model generation, there was the GT and the R3, so this is the GT being the more expensive one, but the more grand touring one, and the R3 is the sportier one with the stiffer suspension, which is not what we have. And we should also mention we have this in a manual transmission. This also came in automatic, but the automatics had less power. Yes, and they were also six speeds, but yeah, less power for sure. So we've both driven this around a bunch. Is it cooler than you thought it was when you first picked it up? Yes, like way cooler. I was expecting this to be kind of bad, because I just, I had very low expectations of this car, but as soon as I hopped in, I let it warm up, get to 9,000, 9,500, it was such a blast to drive. It is a really fun driving experience. It's very raw. It feels like you're actually driving a car unlike all the modern cars nowadays. My dudes, I've had a lot more time to drive this RX-8 since we did the review. And I just want to reiterate that this has been one of the best driving experiences of the year. I love everything about this RX-8 and like, Compared to all the new cars, I've just had so much more fun in this. Yeah, and it's got the right amount of power. It's definitely not slow. It's not fast. It's kind of like a BRZ, but it feels a little quicker. I guess we should also mention that this is rear wheel drive. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so now when I see these on the road, I'm gonna assume everyone who's driving one knows what's up. Oh yeah, like people are smarter than I thought driving these. <laughs> yeah, except I guess I wouldn't know if it's automatic, in which case the person doesn't know what it's up. All right, a little downshift into cliche corner. Oh, you called out your downshift. You're I'm, such a journalist. I'm going to keep it into third because I feel like going through cliche, you're going to be at the top of second gear and I don't want to risk shifting through here. And it feels a little weird through there. It does feel very weird. Like it's good, but it's also very understeery. I feel like you have to do a lot of input and you can get through just fine. You can power oversteer a bit, but it just doesn't feel like every other car I've driven. No, it's got a very weird tendency to understeer and it feels like there's a point where the steering wheel doesn't match up with what the tires are doing. But I'm having fun. Oh yeah, it's still definitely fun. It's just very weird. Okay, so now let's get to the looks. Starting with the front end, the first thing I see is that we got these huge fender bulges and then you've got a hood that kind of comes into the middle. It looks amazing. There's no cars with that kind of fenders out there. Yeah, it looks really good. And then we also kind of have like a triangle motif in the hood, which also translates to a bunch of stuff in here because the rotary engine is a spinning Dorito, as we all know. You can even see it in the seats. Do you like the headlights? I do kind of like the headlights. They are projectors, but I hate the fact that it's halogen regular DRLs and then actual HIDs for the projectors. Yeah, I definitely don't like these headlights and taillights as much as I like the headlights and taillights from before the refresh. I really like these taillights. They're kind of like S2000-ish, as you said before. Yeah, the back makes it look like an S2K, and then we've got an awkwardly placed front plate in old Mazda grills, which also sucks here. So moving around to the side, the overall profile looks really good. Yeah, it looks good, but since we have suicide doors, it's also super weird. They're actually called freestyle doors. Sure, okay, so we have suicide <laughs> doors yeah. because it's a four-seater. You can actually put two people in the back, and I actually fit behind myself and behind Jacob. Yes, but I don't fit behind my Myself at six foot one and a half. And it's so easy to get in there with the suicide door. And then we also have a little window at the back that pops open old school minivan style at the back. It's really smart. It gives you the coupe thing, but it also gives you the four door thing. I like it a lot. But like how much cooler from the side would this have looked if it was just a two door, two seater? Yeah, well, obviously everything looks cooler as a two seater. That's what I'm saying. And what do you think of these wheels? Really like them. You know how much I love light colored wheels. Yeah, I like these a lot. And the ones on the R3 are also really cool too. And what would be the Continental recommended tire for your RX-8. The Extreme Contact Sport. 
And as for the body lines on the RX-8, it's pretty soft, but we've got nice fender flares on the front and the back, so I really like that. Yeah, I like all the bulges and stuff. It just looks like it's got a wide body kit molded in. And what do you think of this white color? It's all right, but this is actually the only optional color. You have to pay extra for this. I would obviously rather have one in yellow or red, and I remember there was a kid in high school in 2004 who had a yellow one, and I always thought it was cool, but I didn't know why it was cool. And now... Man, he had one in 2004. That guy was rich in high he, school. He was definitely rich. Yeah, 16 yeah. years later, I get it. <laughs> and to quickly finish off the back end, yes, it looks like an S2K. We have a little spoiler, but there were versions that had bigger spoilers. Yeah, we do have real exhaust tips because, I mean, this is a 2011 before they started doing really weird stuff. And it is a dual exhaust, so we should probably listen to it. From the outside. <laughs> And unfortunately, this is not a hatch. It does have a trunk, which has a really small entrance, but just for fun, let's do the box test. Box test. And to show you how useless this RX-8 trunk is, we've got a special box test today. The 718 Spider is amazing and we were wrong box. Yes, somebody paid to have their name on a box and that's what they chose to have on the box. It, uh, it doesn't fit. Is that a supercar pass? I don't think so, Yuri. So shout out to that guy for beating us at our own game. If you want to write your own name or any other weird sentence that is a sentence that we kind of have to say unless it's very weird, we won't put it on a box. Get your own box on patreon.com slash straight pipes. So one more pull up to 9,000, you get behind the wheel and then we'll talk about driving and some interior stuff. Okay. <laughs> okay, you go. That's so enjoyable. Not as enjoyable as like a GT3 though. Well, yeah. But still 9,000. Delicate old car rolling launch. Oh, that's good. 9,500, baby. You oh. kept saying nine, but it actually goes to 9,500. Now, I'm not sure if you're supposed to go to 9,500, but it's letting me. I, I want to be gentle with her. I want to be gentle with all old used cars. Yeah, yeah, so do I. But this is a Mazda Canada car with only 8,000 kilometers on it, so I think it's in pretty good shape. And before you get into Cliche Corner, what do you think of the RX-8 logo? It's like that old, cool Mazda style. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Man. I want more of that kind of fun stuff. So now to the actual driving. Let's talk about this six speed. It shifts so well. Throws are so short. I absolutely love everything about this transmission. Yeah, having a stock short throw shifter is so cool. And on top of that, we actually have a triangle on the shifter, which is really cool because spinning Dorito. Yeah, they uh, definitely put a lot of those references in to match the Wankel rotary motor. And then we also have this samurai sword e-brake. Yeah, a lot of people say it's weird and it's got that handle that it kind of grips under, but I think it makes perfect sense because that way they can have it stick up high so that it's easier for you to rip e-brake turns. I like it a lot. I'm not going to rip an e-brake turn into Cliche Corner, but I'm going to send it. Oh, man. You can definitely get the back end out, but the first thing that it wants to do is understeer, and it's like a very weird sensation where it's just... I don't know exactly what the car is doing, but it's still fun. 95. Oh, it's so good. And the reason I'm able to get this thing a little bit sideways is because I pressed my DSC off button and it was one press. I didn't have to hold it for 15 minutes. I didn't have to stop the car. I didn't have to do anything. Yeah, well, even new Mazdas are like that. Yeah, that's the, so good. The Miata is still just one button. Right I love there. it. But even with the weird steering, how amazing does the steering wheel feel? Yeah, the actual feel of like turning and stuff is still really good. It's and just when you get to that limit. No, but weird. I mean even in your hand. Like oh, the, the actual quality? quality is yeah, yeah. Perfect. And driving this thing every day, the one thing that I noticed is that the suspension is also really good. It's, it's very compliant it's a little stiff but it's not too stiff oh definitely not nearly too stiff at all it's appropriate for a sports car that's still comfortable that's easily dailyable and when you do send it it's actually very predictable you know exactly what it's going to do you got a 50 50 weight distribution and it really feels like that yeah and being naturally aspirated as well you know exactly how much power you're going to get like every single time yeah and then heel toe downshifts are perfect everything about the actual driving experience other than that one little steering thing is really good yeah and i don't know if that steering thing is for this exact car that we're driving or across the line of Mazda RX-8s. Yeah, so if you guys own one of those and you know what that is and you've experienced it, leave a comment. So now moving inside here, it's very old school car. Yes, but also kind of new school and I feel like this is the first generation of piano black in cars. Yeah, there's a lot of it. It's kind of gross, but I think you can avoid most of it. And I'm actually surprised at how good it looks because you know it's an older car, it's been through a lot, but the mileage is so low that it's not too scratched up. Okay, so then onto this radio, it's fully built in 
it's all circular and weird shape, but I'm not confused by it at all. But we don't have a screen in this. We just have this little display up there, so it's easy to understand. And there was actually one option for navigation, which we don't have. And then this actually does have satellite radio. If you click the sat button, it'll show up in here and tell you what phone number to call to refresh it. Does it rewind? <laughs> There's a replay button, but I don't <laughs> think that's it. Do we have Android Auto or Apple CarPlay? Nope, and we don't even have a USB or an aux, but we do have a cigarette lighter, so you can plug your little USB adapter into there. Perfect, and then we also have regular climate controls. Everything's physical. There's no touch buttons yeah, here. Yeah, okay. this is so perfect. It is. Three knobs, everything's covered. It shows up up there. This is what new cars need to do. Yes. And my favorite feature that I love in the best of sports cars, we have a tack right in the center. We have a red slash orange needle that goes to a red line that is also red slash orangey. Yeah, so I think it looks really good and you see where red line is. Red line is pretty short, but overall it's so clear. That's just the most important part of cars, having the tack in the middle. And did you notice that there's no analog speedo, only digital? Yeah, and it, and it looks great, it's perfect. They nailed so much back in the day and all these car companies are screwing it up now. Yeah. I wish we were car reviewers right when we got out of high school. Oh little, yeah, we would have changed the whole industry. Pimply face gets, hey, horsepower and torque in 2005. <laughs> 232 horses. Yeah, yeah we could have <laughs> kept this stuff good up until today. And to quickly talk about the steering wheel, we actually have some buttons on it, which is kind of weird, but also kind of nice because it's just simple stuff like volume and tuning. Yeah, and it's nice because all the audio controls are on one side, your cruise controls on the other side, so it's not confusing to use like new steering wheels. They like put weird shapes and buttons on either side. like. Everything is in the right spot. Well, Yuri, I'm just gonna use this just like the Mazda 3 because you gotta use it like this. This is fine because there's no push in on it, right? I know, <laughs> exactly. So now to some fun stuff that we like to usually talk about. Cup holder fits perfectly fine. It'll fit a small and a medium and it hasn't gotten in the way of you shifting at all. Yeah, and that whole thing actually slides back and forth, which is really nice. We also have cup holders in the back, but we're not gonna deal with that. We've got visors Ooh. Uh, with holes in them. <laughs> Three, two, one. Nope, fail, uh, and it's super gimmicky. It has holes in the visor to block the sun, yeah. which is counterintuitive, but that's a gimmick, so it gets a gimmick pass, I think. I guess? In the worst of ways. It's a total fail, like extreme fail. And these seats are really comfortable, they're really well bolstered, they are leather, but they still hold you in. This is a nice feeling leather. The back seats are pretty comfortable as well. And we also have heated seats, which is really nice. What I really like about this is we've got keyless entry with this weird looking key that looks kind of like a little square. Yeah. Yeah. And then you don't need to well, have it's any... A, it's a card key for your wallet. And it's amazing because it's not push to start, but it is keyless starting. You just crank this little cover. Yeah, you, well, you crank a fake plastic key. It's perfect because it's one of the things I love the most about modern cars, and this old car had it. Yeah, and some 911s have this still in 2020. But on the left side. Yes. And the one thing that I've noticed that's been bothering the hell out of me that I can't change and do anything about it is the fact that I am too tall for this car and my hair is hitting the roof in the lowest seating position. Yeah, even at my height, five, eight and a half ish, like it's still a little too tall, but I think we kind of just like sitting on the ground of cars. Well, I don't like my head or my hair touching the headliner. Yeah, no, you definitely have a problem. Yes. Like, thank God I'm not tall. Like it is the best for this line of work. Well, yeah, for actually driving cars and racing cars and all that kind of stuff, it kind of helps to be a little bit shorter. God bless me with no height. <laughs> and let's finish this off with a couple downshifts. Second. That sounds interesting. It's like not the best sound, but it's also not the worst. Yeah, it sounds really good from outside. It's just like a natural feeling sound that you're not getting nowadays. Because when you let off, you're not getting pop, 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 pop. <laughs> yeah, no. Or something stupid. And, there's, and, there's nothing pumped in here. And you were saying, if you take the cats off these, it shoots flames, right? Oh yeah, I believe so. I've seen some YouTube videos because I wanted to buy one of these at one point and shoot some flames for a couple thousand dollars. Okay, we're pretty much done with this 2011 RX-8. Let's get to the price. Well, when it was new, it was $43,795. Canadian. And what do one of these cost nowadays? Well, when I was looking for examples of these to buy for myself, it was approximately $1,000 to about $10,000, depending on condition. Most of them are like under $5,000, and a lot of them say currently does not run. Yeah. Which I is a little scary. I feel like there's a lot of jokes going around. It's like to make one of these runs, just put an LS in it or something like that. Yeah, I don't think they're very reliable. And if you look at all the forums and on all these things, a lot of people are just complaining about how to fix them. This is broken. Mine doesn't start. All that kind of stuff. And then all the rotary people are going to hate me now because they say that those people don't maintain their cars. But to look at this versus like Toyota or something like that, these aren't very reliable. So then one of these in this condition would probably go for around 10 to 15K Canadian. Yeah, maybe even 15 to 20 because this is super low mileage. Okay, 
I really like this now. If I was to get one, I think I'd make sure I have one with a rotary motor in it and try to maintain it. I think it'd be fun. It'd be a fun hobby. And the longer you drive it, the more you see someone on the road and be like, hey, we both have them on the road. We're part of the Cool Kids Club. This is already a classic. I'd probably LS swap mine, but having 9,000 RPM to play with is pretty damn good. So let us know what you think of the RX-8. Is it a lot cooler than you originally thought it was after seeing this review? Because after driving one, every time I see one of these on the road, I'm gonna give that person a thumbs up. And click on this video or playlist of some other old cars. Like we've done a couple of Mazdas. The RX-7? Yeah, we did that, we did the Miatas. 